Hi, welcome to a video where we're going to show how to set up and use this clevis and pin set. This pin set is a patented pin set design. So almost any instrument that walks into the laboratory, that's a crane scale, a traction dynamometer, you know, this pin set can be used to calibrate those. We have two clevises here and we have 17 pins. 17 different pins, that is in the advanced kit. And we have a sheet shows us exactly what we can cal calibrate with this set. So this is available online. This is the large set. There's a smaller set that has only four pins that does the majority of instruments. Uh, being a big fan of the 80-20 principle, it's, you know, 20% of what you have accounts for 80% of what may come in the lab. That four, that four pin set is a good use of the Pareto principle where the four pins will probably do 80% of the instrumentation that could walk into your laboratory. We're gonna set up this instrument. This is a Dillon ED Extreme. If we looked at the spec sheet, it's gonna say we need a 1.97 inch pin for this 55,000 uh, pound dynamometer here. And that is a 50 millimeter pin and it is in the set. So uh, with that said, we're gonna give some close ups of the pins. These are black, they have rust resistant black oxide coating. Uh, they're precision machine, which lowers the calibration errors. They can be used with our quick change tension adapter system, which is set up in the machine. There's a big savings to doing this method versus using several different clevis assemblies, several different pin sizes. It took a lot of engineering and a lot of design to make this patented kit. So, uh, you know, adaptable to numerous instruments through various available shoulder pins. And if we don't have it in the, in the large range of 17, we can make more. It's not, it's not that difficult if a new instrument comes out to add a pin to it. As I said, our existing tension members work well with this set. And what we need to do to use this set is we need to take the coupling nut off. And we can do two things. If you have an old clevis, even, even if you don't have these and have an old clevis, this coupling nut, we have an adapter that can you know, go into the older clevises if that's something that you have one or two older clevises and you see, oh, hey, I like that tension member, the quick change, because it's real easy. So, coupling nut comes off. You can see this, we're on a spherical here. So, I can do this and then you just spin it, spin it on. So, the coupling nut comes off and still, like I said before in a tension video setup, the bottom one, most people just leave that bottom adapter in. Even with this one, the coupling nut comes off, thread the, and you can thread it in. So we do make cases. If you want a case, you can put everything in a, in a nice case. In our lab, we actually have, we made, we made uh, shelving where we put everything on shelves. So on this one, I need to hold the bottom you know, as I spin it around. Both of these are threaded in. I have this Dillon ED Extreme. I looked up the pin sizes. It says it needs a 1.97 inch pin. That's a 50 millimeter pin. I look at my tension set, which this adapter is number 24, which is 197, 50 millimeters. And I'm gonna set this up. Now, people may say, why do you need all these pins? Well, you need them because the output of this device and the way it is gauged, it's gauged on each, their strain gauges on each side. So if I do not use the proper pin size, if I use something too big or too small, I will absolutely be out of tolerance if I use the wrong size. And even someone may say 197, what about a two inch pin? Well, two inch pin could put me out of tolerance. I'm gonna engage more area. And as I engage more area internally on this device, the amount of deformation is going to increase, resulting in higher stress. So it's really important that the pins, the recommended pin sizes are followed and used. And that is why, even though we have a two inch pin, we also have a 197, which is a 50 millimeter pin. Uh, there, we have an example online uh, that where we loaded one with a proper pin diameter and without. And we found this device is spec to 0.1%. 
And by loading it with the wrong pin in some of the examples we've shown, we've seen an error 17 times that of the manufacturer specification. So a device that has a 0.1% accuracy, use the wrong pin and you could be out 17 times, 1.7% in error. So really, really critical to use the right pins. I'm gonna put the, pick this up. This is the hardest part. Lining up the, lining up the hole here. So I have that line, now I have it lined up. You can see there's, as we turn this, you can see there's this, all this clearance here. And this is where we have this piece here. Put that in and then, the, and then we line up the holes. And that's the hardest part of the setup. Like I said, sometimes it's, you know, depending on the technician, sometimes it might be a two person just to pin it. And once, once, once it's pinned, you can always get the bottom pin. Now, I'm going to lower, I have to line up my pins here and we could kind of show that facing forward a little bit. You see my, what challenge I have here. I need to look at this, line up my pins, lower the machine. If you have an older machine without the pendant switch, this is, makes life really easy because if you don't have this, the switches are usually over here and then you're up, down, up, down and you're doing squats, which are good for your health and good to build your legs, uh, but really unnecessary. The pendant switch makes things so much more, so much easier. As you see here, we even, these are all labeled, but we have a, we've cheated and put white tape on it just to make it real easy, real visual for our technicians to find the right adapter. And I'm just gonna put this one on the other side, line up the pins, So line up the pinhole, put, put this in, and this way things won't fall out. Now, the next thing I wanna do is of course you wanna turn the instrument on, and it's on, and I just wanna center this because I don't want anything, I don't want any side loads or eccentric, eccentric forces or anything of the lot. So I've picked up the instrument. You can see my, this whole adapter set weighs about 50 pounds. I'm gonna zero that and center everything. And from there, I'm ready to go. When I'm calibrating, what I wanna do here is I wanna watch these holes and when I pick up and start to apply forces, I wanna make sure nothing's touching internal, you know, on either side. An easy way to do that is take a piece of paper. I just take something, I could take a piece of paper and just make my way around and make sure nothing's touching. If this. If I can slide this the whole way through when I apply a force, my, uh, my force is free. I won't have any friction loss. Everything's set up. It's that easy. A tech can come do another instrument, any, a different pin. All you're doing is pulling the pins out. You wanna set up a load cell for tension, put the coupling nut back on, you're ready to go.